Hi, my name is Bob Higman. I'm the owner here at Corgi Spirits at the Jersey City Distillery. We are the first distillery ever in Hudson County and in Jersey City. Um, so we're really proud to have that distinction. Um, Corgi Spirits focuses on gin and we also have a vodka, um, but our two uh, main products are, are our gins. Um, they are British inspired. Um, gin is huge over in Britain and has been for quite a long time. Um, corgis, the dogs that I had growing up, um, are also British. They are the dogs of the Queen of England. Um, but they're also really fun and playful and really fun to be around. Um, so that's what I wanted for our brand. We wanted something with a rich history um, that was British inspired, focusing on gin, but also playful and accessible because we do make alcohol, which is fun. Um, so we uh, also have a social mission to our brand. So I am a dog lover. I have volunteered with Sea Spot Rescued um, here in Jersey City for a number of years. It's a dog and animal uh, rescue agency. And we also work with Liberty Humane Society here in Jersey City. Um, because we do love animals as much as we love spirits, we donate a portion of profits from every bottle that we sell um, to Sea Spot Rescued and to Liberty Humane Society so that they can keep their missions going um, and saving animals' lives and finding them loving forever homes. Uh, we love Jersey City. We think that this is the greatest place to possibly be to start our business. Um, I have lived here for almost four years now. Um, I love it here. I think Jersey City has an amazing community, um, amazing food and beverage and cultural scene, and so we're just really happy to be a part of it. Um, and we believe that if we're going to be successful here at the distillery and with Corby Spirits, we need the support of the Jersey City community. Um, and in turn, we need to support the community and the organizations that we think are making our community here great. Um, so we work with uh, a number of nonprofits. So we work with the New Jersey Food Bank, uh, the Hudson City, uh, the Jersey City Parks Coalition, Hudson Pride Connection Center, um, and the Jersey City Arts Council. Uh, we think that these are all organizations that are doing great work, and we want to keep that work going, and we want to keep them um, doing the great things that they help to make Jersey City a great place. Right now we're actually running a batch of gin. Um, I'm using our eye still. Um, this is from the Netherlands. Uh, we are going to launch our holiday gin on November 25th, which is Small Business Saturday. It's the Saturday right after Thanksgiving. Um, so it's called our Very Merry Gin. Um, it's gonna be uh, sort of inspired by figgy pudding. So we'll have dried figs, raisins, um, cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, cloves, mm -hmm. um, some vanilla, some orange peel, so it's going to taste like the holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm really excited about it, and you can actually smell it right yeah, now. It sort of smell smells it. like all those baking spices. Yeah. Um, so we're excited. This is my first full batch of running it. I've done a couple of test batches, so mm -hmm. I hope it comes out well. You guys are here for an historic moment. <laughs> Our first batch ever of Very Merry Gin, so okay. yeah. So how long does it take to uh, distill, like the process? Um, so this process will take me about seven hours. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is we need to first heat up everything in there, and then we need to run at a consistent temperature so that we have the alcohol vapor coming over. Um, we then condense it. We have our cooling water running in our condenser mm -hmm. um, right there, and then we'll collect it slowly but surely on the other side. We're going to start um, playing around with whiskey and with brandy. Um, and so with brown spirits, you need to make sure you do have copper in your still um, because you're not purifying brown spirits the same way that you do with vodka. Um, and that leaves some impurities behind. So those impurities actually bind to the copper mm -hmm. as you distill and it makes for a much smoother uh, product at the end. Um, so we're going to see if Departed Souls can make a really nice gluten-free beer base for us. Mm -hmm. We'll put that into our still, we'll strip the alcohol off, and then we'll have a nice whiskey, mm -hmm. um, which would be great. And then um, we also hope to work with Ironbound Cider, um, which is based out of New Jersey. And they make a great hard cider. Um, we're going to buy that from them, put it in our still, and we'll have a New Jersey apple brandy that we can serve.
tasting some of our spirits today. Um, we have three products that we make right now. We have our vodka, um, we have our Pembroke gin, and we have our signature product, which is our Earl Grey gin. All of our products are made from potatoes, so they're certified gluten-free. Um, and so let's start with the vodka. That's the first one in front of you right now. Um, yeah, so that's our, our Saddle Coat vodka. Um, really smooth. I like potatoes as a base for spirits. I think it makes for a nice, easy to drink, very smooth product. Um, you have a little bit of salinity from the potatoes, a little bit of creaminess, um, and really no burn whatsoever. It's a nice, smooth um, vodka. If you're a vodka drinker, um, this is great neat on the rocks, makes a great cocktail. And then the second one that you have um, is our Pembroke gin. So this is um, what's called a new American or a modern style gin. Um, this is more floral and citrusy, so it's not a London dry. London dry styles have a lot of juniper berries, and juniper berries are what makes gin gin. Um, but usually London dry have a lot of juniper berries. They have a lot of coriander, which is the seed of cilantro. Um, a lot of people don't like cilantro. They say it's like soap. Um, so we don't use um, a ton of cilantro or a ton of juniper. Um, we like to focus on more floral, citrusy elements. So in our Pembroke gin, um, we have pink grapefruit peel, lemon peel, orange peel. We use pink peppercorn, so it gives, which gives it a nice sort of floral element, but also some heat. Um, and then we also have lavender, chamomile, and elderflower. Um, so it's floral, citrusy, um, you get a nice aroma from it, but it also has a nice, easy flavor to it. Um, and you can drink it, again, you can have it neat on the rocks. Um, and then any gin cocktail, you can use this in it, and it makes for a really lovely cocktail. And then the last one is our signature product. So this is our Earl Grey gin. Um, we are the only Earl Grey gin here in the United States. Um, so we are very proud of, of that distinction and to, to be the first. Um, we use almost as much premium Earl Grey tea as we do juniper berries in this. We also use bergamot lemon, which bergamot lemon is sort of the, the citrusy zing that you get from Earl Grey tea. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really easy to drink. You get a lot of tea on the aroma, a lot of tea on the palate, um, and it's great as a hot toddy. It's great in a cocktail. Um, a lot of people ask me what they can do with Earl Grey gin because it seems kind of confusing to use it in a cocktail. Um, I would say any drink that you make with normal gin, you can make with the Earl Grey gin. Um, you may have to tweak the recipe a little bit to account for all of the flavor that we have in this. Um, but for me, if I'm working here in the tasting room and I'm making cocktails all day, I'll go home, I'll pour this out neat, or I'll pour it on the rocks and that's my drink for the evening. Because mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to have to make a cocktail and this is just great on its own. Mm -hmm.